uh, idea about this workshop is how good is Willis as a robotic system helps in our uh, practice to achieve good functional outcome and also good patient, patient satisfaction. So that is what we are aiming at and uh, in all these talks we are trying to simplify the advantage of this whole robotic system. So what is Willis? Yes, it is an image free saw based robotic system where we use the attune uh, system as the uh, implant. So a very good implant definitely initially it had some issues but it has been all sorted out from the TBL side and so now the performance wise there is no doubt about it. So what is this whole uh, uh, session about whether this wellness system will help in achieving this patient specific alignment and with all the talks from morning I think patient specific alignment may be the future we do not know we have to wait and see but we can keep doing it in a very restricted careful manner so that we do not have any big issues. So that should be the idea the numbers are increasing arthritic cases are increasing in India huge numbers so definitely total knee is going to increase in same time patient dissatisfaction yes 20 percent patient are unhappy why this unhappiness various reasons we can keep on talking about it but at the end Component malposition, patient selection and expectation, these are the very key factors we have to look into that. Component malposition, whatever it is, definitely not acceptable. But mal alignment, again, we, when we do conventionally, we may not accept. But when we are doing robotically assisted, based on the clinical condition and the soft tissue, we might be able to adjust here and there, as Dr. Vaidya was telling, how to adjust all those things. So, to do, to help us in this, I think robot is helping and it will be, it will stand at least in the near future and we have to wait and see whether that is good. So in that well is definitely yes, it is very, very simple to use, straightforward machine. It is easy to adapt and also get uh, trained. The system as such, very, very compact. It has got a very compact system and it is not a very huge one. So it handling and uh, adapting is very good. Actually, Dr. Vaidya has covered this uh, whole uh, uh, registration process it's a this is how the machine is if I don't know how many of you are using Willis here the machine the robotic arm is mounted on the table it can be mounted on to the uh, uh, the chair uh, table also the wheelchair also wheel cot but it is my I use it by mounting it on the table the registration process is quite simple unlike I don't know about the other systems where you need you need to take a CT scan and all those things here it takes you takes you through by itself it's like you don't need to by heart any steps next next step it takes you through very easily the screen is so user friendly you just need to have a pedal down and you just keep doing what it says wherever it says you keep the point and keep pressing the pedal it goes to the next step so once you do that completely then the screen comes so here once you take you can do the every adjustment do the tibial cut so the planning system is very very versatile and then once you do that, then you, it comes the uh, pro adjust system. So what is that pro adjust system? A small quick video about this pro adjust. That is the most important and it is the strength of the wellness. What is that pro adjust? Once the initial planning is done, this screen comes in. You just listen to that. So the surgeon can personalize alignment and balance relative to soft tissue. To modify the initial surgical plan and obtain the intended ligament tension, there are two major steps. The first step is to adjust the femoral component position to achieve parallel medial and lateral gaps. This is achieved by adjusting varus valgus orientation of the femoral component varus valgus to adjust the gaps in extension and adjusting femoral component internal external rotation to change the gaps in flexion. The second step is to equalize the flexion and extension gaps by using a combination of adjustments. For example, adjusting the distal femoral resection level to increase or decrease the extension gap, or modifying femoral component size or AP position to increase or decrease the flexion gap. If you are following a patient-specific workflow, anatomical component positioning can be achieved by adjusting the varus valgus orientation of the tibial and femoral implants. So that is a big advantage. So this. This pro adjust system helps you to plan based on what kind of alignment you are what you want to do that. So this is how the setup is. Once you uh, do that, you start the registration, and then the, the you can go ahead and do the uh, total knee 
as you do regularly with the help of the system that is the that is how it is very much in helpful and uh, it can be femur first or tibia first i do always tibia first it can be either way because if you are doing a kinematic alignment you can do a femur first also tibia workflow is very very simple again this is the pro, uh, first initial once you do the uh, put the registry do the registration then you go ahead and do the flexion extension gap assessment ligament tensioning once that is done then you know how much of varus how much of flexion extension is there sagittally this is coronally so very clear medial lateral ap and the screen is allows you to you yourself do the touching uh, by uh, sterile screen uh, cover otherwise the technician can help you once that is done then you come to the pro adjust system there you can you have the sizing what size it says how much of tibial cut once you do the tibial cut then you can go ahead and do the tibial cut then put the uh, tensioner once the tensioner is there then you go ahead and do the adjustment in the femur based on the tension so it is the second chance for you as dr vaidya said it is the second chance for you to adjust the um, uh, femoral component and get your graft correct once that is there then you know you are ready and you do the distal femur resection again you can do one more check here that see that the leg is straight there once this is there you don't need to do any more release almost the surgery is over you go ahead and do the chamfer cuts once the chamfer cut is there then you do the uh, cementing and then the post op protocol patient is ready to uh, walk the next day so the literature wise if you see image free robotic assisted totally definitely demonstrates very good uh, outcomes single stage bilateral is very much possible this is a case example where bilateral totally was done with the robot help of robot again the planning very very simple straightforward post op x ray patient pain relief and definitely rehabilitation is faster the, the, we don't know the exact reason but multiple things quick faster surgery maybe very minimal soft tissue release patient is walking comfortably this is a post operative x ray whenever there is an implant like that inside the femur 73 year old female if you want to do a uh, surgery you have to do either two stage or you have to remove the implant and then go ahead and do so two incisions lot of blood loss but this system you, you don't need to do a, any implant removal you just do the uh, surgery with the robotic assisted and then the patient is comfortable walking another example 63 year old female you look at the scanogram here this is the initial plan 9 mm proximal tibial cut was done and then tibial resection it is accurate precision once the tibial resection is done then you go ahead and do the uh, put the uh, that uh, ligament tensioner and the tensioner is straight forward you just put it inside two sizes comes and then take into medial lateral and then flexion extension and once that is done this graphs this this comes this comes once this comes that you know that you have taken the tibial cut then now you go ahead and do the femoral adjustment so this is where as the video showed you go and do the varus valgus of the femur then you go ahead and do the anterior cut immediate post op 65 year old female hyper extension is there varus deformity you can see here posteriorly no osteophytes nothing it's only the uh, hyper extension there so that means this is a lax knee so you have to be very careful in these cases so this helps so this is the uh, initial assessment after the array see how much of hyper extension is there and th there is already valgus deformity here that is the uh, no neutral alignment not much of varus deformity hyper extension then you go ahead and do the tibial cut so i am reducing the tibial cut to 8 mm then i am going and reducing the distal femur cut and then the uh, flexion gap is external rotation done flexion uh, femur component is flexed i'm keeping the knee little tight in this situation because there is already hyper laxity hyper extension i don't want a loose knee or a lax knee unlike in a regular varus so this is the post operative after taking the cut this is how the uh, final implantation once that is done this is a post operative x ray so you can you it is almost the value shows what kind of tension what kind of tightness you want one more example 69 year old female in this case it's a quite a little unique case you can see a, me, normally you will see a lateral femoral condyle hypoplasia here in this you can see that there is a medial femoral condyle hypoplasia so in this case if you do a manually if you take into the uh, usual conventional jigs you might externally excessively externally rotate and you will have a medial gap uh, after putting the implant so in this case what i we have done i did a 
P s knee with the slope of 3 degrees and this is the uh, again hyper extension is there in this case already neutral alignment. So, this is how the planning was done and then again because of the hyper extension because of the uh, loose knee implant is um, sizing is ready the thickness is reduced in the tibial cut again minimal varus. I do not give 3 degrees, 4 degrees of varus, 1 degree of varus is given in the tibia and again this is how the uh, planning is done and then one this is these planning once tibial cut is done then go to the um, femoral planning after the tensioner and again the knee is made to tighten this uh, tight knee was achieved. So, this is a full extension post operative x-ray again 51 year old very unusual. So, you can see here. 51 year old there, there is a medial, bo uh, ma medial bone loss lateral side also if you see how much of sloping is there very unusual B this side bone loss is there that side lateral tibial condyle also. So, it is a little challenge even for a in a kind of conventional way for an experienced surgeon for in this case the robot definitely helped me to get the um, stability by go going ahead and doing two times of rechecking and then getting the cuts getting the rotations accordingly and uh, this is how extension gap after cuts you do the trial and then go ahead and do the uh, finally this is a graph you can see in extension the medial side is tight rest of the place it is ok evenly balanced. So, after doing that I went ahead and did the medial reduction osteotomy and then got that extension tight. So, this system allows you to do your minimal soft tissue release also. So, in this case this is a post operate uh, after doing all the implantation this is how the post operative graph. So, you can see the stability is achieved with the help of the system. So, final post operative x-ray again same one more example bilateral valgus with the help of the system I am able to achieve again one more implant in situ no need to remove it patient is walking next day comfortable doing all flexions. So, we did a one study at our center we early assessment of TK managed with this Velis system excellent patient satisfaction comparable outcomes robotic TKR with traditional TKR surgical precision accuracy is better in this. So, definitely literature wise there is a lot of support for robotic personalizing our TKA surgical technique definitely helps in the reducing the dissatisfaction as we discuss in the morning this patient specific alignment is definitely going to be the game changer future maybe we have to wait and see probably there is need for lot of alignment philosoph philosophies because in the native knee there is a obliquity and all these alignment strategies needs a technology and for that wellness definitely helps systematic alignment patient specific hybrid what we are now landed up is in somewhere in hybrid Dr. Vaidya told about this now he is doing more of functional like functional and then another word is called as assisted functional. So, that is what we are uh, doing it. So, definitely all this which this we had discussed in the morning kinematic alignment, but if you see even in the outlier group and in the perfectly aligned group there is no big difference. So, that means what you have you can have some sort of outliers and that that is that outlier we are you are creating with the help of the robot those outliers were created unintentionally, but we are creating it with the help of robot. So, this is the various alignments which you can do, but remember always when you are going to do a altered alignment other than your mechanical alignment you need some sort of technology whether it anything, but you need a technology without that you cannot do. So, last case last example bilateral total knee see the see the way she is walking she had she has hyper extension. So, this is how it might look little straightforward even for a conventional, but once you start doing the with the robotic assisted then you will know how much of uh, inputs we can get from the system. So, that we can even address the minute minute things by this uh, robot. So, the varus valgus see the amount of opening it is there in a routine uh, practice we may not take this stress views for a val varus knee simple varus, but once you do that you can see that much of information is available. So, you do not need to do any release at all in these cases, but for that you have to put the components in the right place which the robot system helps. So, slope everything was calculated same step by step you take it 
and then again in these cases I have given minimal varus to the tibial trade not more than 2 degrees I, I do and then adjust the femoral component. So, same both sides it was done want of time I am skipping. So, this pro adjust graph uh, uh, screen helps for that versatile planning. So, final this is the post operative sorry this is the post operative x-ray minimal varus in the tibial tray so much of so much of uh, rotations you can give it in the uh, femur where you can flex it extend it all those things. So, finally definitely personalized knee arthroplasty technique may allow faster recovery better functional scores and pain relief with sim similar survival rates for that attuned system is definitely one of very good design particularly the femur side lot of issues of all this petla mal tracking has been addressed with the trochlear design. So, Artune is definitely one of the best uh, one of the good system that we have now currently particularly this is the this is one of the system which has got a, a gradius curve which prevents the uh, flexion in mid flexion instability. So, it is very very advantageous the only system which has got a gradius curve here and if recent literature which has been published in 2022 the modified design of Artune could increase the long term satisfaction with the implant and reduce the need for revision surgery. So, definitely it is a, a good system which helps us to get a good outcome. Thank you.